Hey there, Regen family. Hope you're doing well. Um, it is Regen Hangout time, and uh, I'm glad you're with us this morning. Uh, I am actually um, going solo this morning, so I'm just, um, I got like three or four different screens in, in our uh, bedroom that we kind of have as an office, and if you've, if you've ever looked, you can see I got, I don't know if you want to call it man uh, man cave stuff or boy cave stuff. I got a little bit of Star Wars stuff and a little bit of a little bit of everything. And and uh, Spider Man's my favorite. Anyway, um, glad you're with us this morning. Please um, make sure to let us know uh, you're out there and and that you're uh, you're watching. Would love to spend some time with you. Um, man, if you, uh, if you weren't able to, uh, um, be with us last night or, uh, a week ago, uh, last night, man, we had a great time last night, um, at the church space, just, um, uh, having worship and, um, e e the encounter gatherings. Uh, I want, I want to do those in the future once we get back together and do those occasionally just to, um, uh, be able to help us just experience God more. I think one of the things that we've uh, we've missed a little bit, and 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 I think we have been slowly growing and getting better in it. But I feel like we need to do what we can to help each other and encourage each other when we gather together on Sunday mornings to really be able to feel free and kind of let ourselves go a little bit, um, and and worship and um, uh, be very expressive um, in that. Uh, I feel like sometimes we uh, we don't um, make ourselves uh, we're not as expressive as we could be, and and I think we really need to work at being that way uh, of really um, letting the Lord know how we feel and and being demonstrative. Maybe that's the right word. Uh, being more demonstrative uh, in, uh, in 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 this. Um, it's just one of those things that I think sometimes we uh, we get distracted by the people that are with us, or we get very uh, uh, we have we get very self aware, and we don't want to come off as I don't know being too emotional, or we're just scared, maybe getting embarrassed. And and I feel like we have a church space, uh, a church family that has always been very open to us being able to worship and and share. And uh, so I think we need to to constantly work towards that. And these encounter gatherings, one of the points of it was for us to begin to do that and to, to feel more um, together. And also at the same time, I feel like um, it was for us to begin oop, to do that. What, what are we doing to, here? To feel more um, together. I don't know what we're doing here. I don't know and what happened. At the same time, I feel like um, it was for us to begin oop, to do that. What, what are we doing here? To more, um, <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> I don't what know. Happened? I don't know what we're doing here. I don't know. I have no idea what I've done. Oh, I know what I'm doing. There we go. I uh, I brought uh, YouTube up on my phone, and I'm I'm hearing myself and watching myself. And okay, I know what Mike's thinking. Uh, way to go, Boomer! And and that's exactly that's exactly me right there, um, bringing up stuff and not knowing what the heck I'm doing. Um, so anyway. Um, <laughs> trust me, don't ever be embarrassed. Be afraid to just be self-aware. Don't be afraid to be self-aware and just um, let it all out there, even if you don't know what you're doing, because that's me. I have no idea what I'm doing sometimes. But um, the gatherings last night and, and last Saturday were awesome, and um, they, they were there for us to be able to freely worship and be able to freely uh, give ourselves to God and express ourselves to Him and be challenged. And, and also, they were uh, intentional times for us to... Uh, um, be in the gradual journey of us getting back together on Sunday mornings. And, um, 
you know, I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that um, the uh, the guidelines and everything are are slowly being um, loosened and and lessened, but um, the guidelines are still there. And um, I don't know if you've seen, uh, but there were uh, the governor this week um, released. Um, I think there were four or five different um, churches that had some small small little outbreaks of. Uh, uh, the coronavirus just because of their gathering together and maybe not being as careful as they could be. And I, and I feel like we, we, uh, do ourselves justice. Uh, I believe that we, um, are, are a better witness to, to be patient and to slowly get ourselves back to where we can be together. And at the same time, I think it gives us an invaluable time to, really invest in each other. And that's one of the reasons why the home groups are so important. And if you have not yet signed up for a home group, would love for you to do that. Um, regenerationwv.com slash crave. Um, those are going to be starting next Sunday. And when you go to the page and you bring down the drop, uh, the drop down menu, uh, you're going to see that they are geographically based. And so there's one at the church space. There's one at Edison and Cindy Atkins ha uh, home. There's one at Ben and uh, Hannah Frederick's home in Barbersville. Uh, one in um, at Molly Arthur's home in Barbersville. Uh, there's going to be one in Proctorville, Ohio at Charlie and Angie Rhodes home home and there's going to be two in Taze Valley, one at Mike and Sonny's home and one at mine and Wendy's home. And, and uh, um, it, it, they're, they're just going to be great to watch the gathering together, um, get that fellowship uh, family feel, begin to get that feel again, but also build some relationships maybe with people that you wouldn't normally build some relationships. And the whole idea is to just to slowly begin to grow and branch out. And so we will, we will um, get in smaller groups and in all actuality, we're going to talk some this uh, about this next Sunday. Um, we're, we're starting a series. We're finishing up this morning, the series called what's in the name. And I'm going to read a passage of scripture before we close out this morning. Um, but uh, um, I, I'm going to, uh, um, I want to read a passage of scripture, but we're going to talk about groups. We're going to talk about the uh, uh, the reason why, um, in all actuality, the idea of a home group or a house church is really more scriptural than what we do on a Sunday morning conceptually. Not talking the spiritual aspect of things, just talking conceptually. Um, that's more scriptural and more New Testament based than the the actual big Sunday morning gathering. And so we're going to be talking about that. We're finishing up what's in the name this this morning, and next Sunday we're going to start a message series called "Come Together," and that's going to lead to us literally um, being back together and um, uh, having a next step Sunday and a celebration Sunday at the church space and, and and all of that. And so we're excited and we want you to help us be a part of that as we build towards that and and and, and snowball or build, grow the excitement. We want you to, to really be a part of this and, and take advantage of this because church, we have got to, this is this is a time for us because of the, the, the culture that we live in I'm sorry, I'm getting passionate, but the, the 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 environment and the culture we live in right now needs the gospel, needs Jesus more than ever. And the way they're going to hear him, the way they're going to see him is through us, the church, being present wherever we are and 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 having a voice when needed and, and just loving people um, and leading with his love and then speaking into uh, the, the culture and the lives that we have. And so um, that is so important. That uh, um, um, we need to, we just need to, to be together. Okay, I want to read a passage of scripture. Thank you, guys. I'm looking on here. I was finally able to bring this up um, and um, be able to watch this on my phone without hearing myself and freaking myself out, not knowing what I was doing. Um, I want to lead us into. Uh, and 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 oh, by the way, thank you guys. Whoever was involved, uh, all the people who were involved in last uh, night and the week before, um, thank you guys so much. Whether you came, whether you were a part of the worship, whether you uh, helped beforehand, everybody, everything, it was amazing. And um, it just continues to grow the excitement of me of, of us getting back together. And so um, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 24 um, this is a passage that's going to go along with our message this morning. Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. 
This is the Lord talking. Verse 24, Jeremiah 23. Can anyone hide in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. All you've got to do is look with your heart, with your soul, with your eyes, and you will see God because he is everywhere. And since he fills us with his presence, wherever we are, he is there. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. I love you guys. Thank you guys, Charlie and Angie and Sherry and Ruth and Larry and Vicki and um, uh, Jennifer and Molly and Opie and LaRonda and Britta. Uh, thank you guys uh, so much for uh, um, being on this morning and, and watching and sharing. And uh, let's go into our gathering this morning and let's be excited about what God's going to do. Let me pray for us. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for who you are and what you do. Thank you, God, that you are everywhere and you sent Jesus so that we would not have to be separated anymore. And God, through him, you would fill us with your presence. And then wherever we are, you are there. I thank you for that. And I pray, God, that you would work in and through us when we are in the environments around us, that you would help us to be your voice, your love, your presence in the world. God, thank you. We pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to go into the countdown and then we're going to go into uh, our gathering. Don't forget, if you haven't yet signed up for one of sign up for one of the Crave groups, um, regenerationwv.com slash Crave. Watch our social media this week. Let's worship God together. If nobody's told
Thanks for tuning in this week. Um, don't forget, next week we'll be moving to our Crave groups and uh, in the in homes. So uh, go uh, to regenerationwv.com and get signed up. And if you need anything, text or call the number below. Thank you. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not
Come on, we need a rescue. I need a rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, I ran out of that crib. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day.
Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And I tell you, I, I never want to take for granted the fact that you give up part of your Sunday to be with us, whether it's here physically in this space or you're sitting at home or wherever you might be watching this, never want to take for granted that you are, are a part of our church family. And even if you've caught this by accident, maybe you were looking through things and found us on YouTube. Um, maybe you got to our website and you were looking. I don't know, but thank you for being with us. And I pray that God uses our gathering this morning morning to, to speak to you. Um, if you have a Bible or a Bible app, turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, we're eventually going to get there and, and about halfway through the chapter is where we're going to pick up. And it's going to be uh, something that is going to help us wrap up everything that we're going to talk about this morning. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, it's campaign season. It is. And the, the campaign signs have blossomed up everywhere it seems like wherever they were planted, that's where they are. You can't get away from them. There's the candidate, their picture, their platform, their name. They're just everywhere. You, you turn on the TV and you see the commercials and it seems like they are, are going to play back to back. And just like it is every election season, uh, you just can't get away from them. They're everywhere. And I, I'm just telling you, I would love to spend the money that they spend on getting their names out there. I'm sure it's in some cases astronomical what they spend but they're everywhere. Kind of like you ever listen to a song and it doesn't matter how much you hear of it, you take it with you and that song is everywhere. You hear just 30 seconds of it and you can't get it out of your head. You, uh, you uh, go to bed and in the middle of the night you wake up and you hear this song and you're singing it. You just can't get away from it. Um, for instance, um, I'm going to take my horse to the old town road. I'm going to yeah, I know you didn't you didn't sing it out loud, but you you thought it you sang it to yourself. <laughs> or how, how about this one? Sweet Caroline. You're singing. I know you are. Um, how about this one? Dum, 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 da, da, dum, 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 da, da, dum. OK, OK, I'm stopping. I know because some of you are saying stop and some of you are going to text right now and say stop. <laughs> but that song, I love that song because depending on what genre or maybe what era, two clues, Vanilla Ice, Queen and David Bowie. Hmm? <laughs> how, how, how about this one? Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. 
We, we, we need, and you're singing with that one, you know, and, and we need a, a, a bouncy ball that goes across the screen like that so we can do karaoke. Maybe, maybe we need to do online karaoke sometime. That would be, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, God is everywhere. Just like the campaign signs and commercials and that song you can't get out of your head that follows you everywhere, God is literally everywhere. He is what's called omnipresent, which means he is present in all places at all times. Scripture tells us in the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 139, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If, my, if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. God is literally everywhere. And because of his nature, because of his character, because of who he is, even though he's everywhere, he doesn't want to be a distant God. He wants to be right there with us, wherever we are, right in the middle of it. He wants to be, he desires to be a part of our life. In another chapter in the book of Psalms, chapter 36, it says, God's love is meteoric, his loyalty astronomic, his purpose titanic, his verdicts oceanic. Yet, in his largeness, nothing gets lost. Not a man, not a mouse slips through the cracks. I love how the message paraphrase puts those verses. It says that not a man or a mouse will slip through the crack. Nothing gets out of his sight. Nothing gets out of his attention. Why? Because he is everywhere. And while that's hard to comprehend, he desires to literally be with his people. He wants to be present and he promises it. We just have to look. In Ezekiel, uh, in the Old Testament, uh, Ezekiel was a prophet that God rose up to speak to the exiled Jews who lived in Babylon. He was essentially a street preacher who told everyone he came into contact with that God uh, had a, a judgment and he also had salvation that was available to them. Uh, Ezekiel called for repentance and, and obedience from God's people because uh, they had sinned and, and they had turned away from him. He wanted to, to speak through Ezekiel. God wanted to speak through Ezekiel and let them know that they were now in captivity and it was their own doing. God had taken his presence away. In a sense, he had taken his protection from them, but he shows Ezekiel a, a vision telling uh, Ezekiel that he's going to give his presence back to the people again, that he's going to inhabit the temple in Jerusalem again. God says in Ezekiel 48, and the name of the city from that time on will be the Lord is there. We're, we're finishing up this series that we've been in the last few weeks called uh, What's in a Name? And we've been looking at different Hebrew names and this name kind of caps everything off. The name that Ezekiel uses here, the Hebrew is Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. You see, in spite of what the people had done, God's desire was to be with them, and he desired for them to be with him. And you see this all through the Bible. You see it through the Old Testament. From the very beginning of creation, we see that God longed to be with his people. In Genesis chapter 3, we, we get the idea that God would come and spend time with, with Adam and Eve. It says, verse 8 of chapter 3, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, maybe it's a big assumption, but if, an, if Adam and Eve were living in the Garden of Eden and God walked there in the afternoon, more than likely, they would spend time together. They would walk together. And I don't know if God appeared in a physical form or if it was more of a spiritual, intangible form. I don't know. But they were together. God was present with his people. But then we see the devil manipulates Adam and Eve and, and, and they disobey God and their sin separates them from God. God casts them out of the garden and they were no longer in his presence. But from that point on, God is continually 
showing himself, making himself evident, calling to his people, pursuing them, wanting to be with them. Why? Because he is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. God goes to Noah in Genesis chapter 6 and, and tells him he's going to destroy the earth by flood. Uh, the, the earth, the people are too evil. Noah is the only one righteous that God finds. And so he destroys the earth, makes a covenant with Noah and his family that, that he will never again destroy the earth. Why? He, he will never kill off all of mankind. Why? Because God is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there and he wants to be present. He wants to be with his people. In Genesis 12, he makes another covenant with Abraham and, and tells Abraham that through him, he's going to make a great nation of people that he will bless, that his presence will be with them. Why? He wants to be with his people. Through Joseph in, in chapters 37 through 50 in Genesis, we see that God's chosen people, the Israelites, grow into a great nation, which is what Abraham had been told by God. And, and they end up living in Egypt because that's where Joseph ends up. They become a threat to Pharaoh because they become so huge and Pharaoh makes them slaves. But God calls Moses and Moses leads them out of Egypt. Why? Because God's presence is with them. He is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. Moses leads them into the wilderness and, and on the way to the land that God promised them, they begin to complain and, and they begin to argue and they turn away from God and they even refuse to trust him. And it's time and time again that he refuses or, or they refuse to, to, to obey him. But every time... He makes himself evident and he saves them and he just reminds them that his presence is with them. He parts the Red Sea so they can escape Pharaoh. He provides water and manna and quail for them to drink and eat as they survive in the wilderness. He appears as a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night for them to follow as he leads and guides them. Why? Because he is with them. He is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. But it wasn't enough just for God to lead them. It wasn't enough just for him to be with them. He wanted to literally be among them. So he goes to Moses and he gives instructions for them to build what is called the tabernacle. And in Exodus 25, God tells Moses... Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. The people come together, and they bring all the things needed to build their tabernacle. And in Exodus 40, we see God occupy the tabernacle. Starting with verse 34 in Exodus 40, it says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day and fire was in the cloud by night in the sight of all the house of Israel during all their travels. Wherever God's people were, wherever they went, they set up the tabernacle. Why? Because God wanted to be among his people. His presence was with them. He is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. Years later, David desires to build a permanent place for the people of God to worship. And he wants to build a place where God's presence would forever be with his people. Eventually, David's son Solomon builds the temple. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, Solomon has the Ark of the Covenant brought to Jerusalem and placed in the temple. 
the ark uh, represented the covenant that God had made with his people. And what was God's covenant? Remember, he made a, co- a covenant with Noah. He made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with Moses, uh, with the people. In, in, in Deuteronomy 29, Moses leads the people in a renewal of this covenant. And he says, he says in verse 12, you are standing here in order to enter into a covenant with the Lord your God. A covenant the Lord is making with you this day and sealing with an oath to confirm you this day as his people, that he may be your God as he promised you and as he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am making this covenant with its oath, not only with you who are standing here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here today. God promises to be the Israelites' God. He promises to be with them and to bless them. Why? Because God's presence was with them. He is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. Now, here's the thing that I, that I, that we, we can't lose sight of, and this is where I want us to to begin to apply it and make it personal. Going forward in scripture, we constantly see God reminding the people that he is their God and that he is with them, but they turn away. He calls them on it and they repent and come back to him. Now, when we get to Ezekiel, this has been the covenant pattern, the consistent pattern. God makes a covenant with his people. He says, I will be the Lord your God. I am Jehovah Shema. I am with you. But then the people turn away and then he pulls his presence, but then they repent and come back and he gives his presence again. It's just a never ending consistent thing. But in Ezekiel 48, we see Ezekiel's vision, not just... For the, the Israelite people, we see going through this cycle, but we see his vision, not just for their future, but for the eternal future to come, our future. Now, let's go back to Deuteronomy 29. Moses tells the Jewish people that God was not only making his covenant with them, but those who are not here today. And who is that? That's us. In Acts chapter 2, after Peter preaches to the people who were listening uh, about Jesus, the, the people that were listening were cut to the heart and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter answers, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. From this point forward in Acts chapter 2, Peter was making it clear that the gospel wasn't just for the Jews anymore. It wasn't just for the Israelites. It was also for the Gentiles, the non Jews, as, as he says here in verse 39 of Acts 2, it was for whoever God would call. And who is that? It's everyone. It's us. Now, this is so important for us to understand. Why? Because God wants you to know that he wants his presence to be with you and not just with you. And this is the amazing thing that, that, that it's what Jesus did. And we'll get there, but it's the amazing thing. God dwelt with his people. He was Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. And he was among his people in the Old Testament. But then Jesus came and it's not just among his people anymore. It's not just that. He is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there in you. This is so important for us to really work hard at grasping and believing. Jesus died so that you could not be... He he came and he lived and he died so that God wouldn't just be with you. You would now be a temple. He would be in you. In you. 
Now, I had you turn to Ephesians chapter 2, um, where you've been holding it. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, starting with verse 11. I'm reading from the NIV, the New International Version. Listen to what it says. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of man, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from uh, citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. What this means is that when you say that you believe that God is Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there, you're saying that he is literally there at work in and through you. Yes, you. How? Because of the Holy Spirit. Peter said in Acts chapter 2, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. So it's no longer us being separated from God or even what well, we choose to believe in God. So now he is with us. It's more than him just being with us and among us. He is now literally in us. So when we see ourselves, we can say, Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. He is with us. And I know some of you are saying, me, he's in me, yes, you. The one who has a sketchy, filthy, dirty, sinful past. Yes, you. He wants to be in you. The one who's turned away from God more times than you can count and, and, and literally intentionally disobeyed. Yes, you. He wants to be in you. The one that looks in the mirror and, and all they see is ugliness and imperfection. Yes, you. God wants to be not just with you, in you. The one that doesn't feel uh, they're worthy to be in the Lord's presence. Let me tell you, none of us are worthy to be in the Lord's presence. But God sent Jesus. And because of Jesus, we can now confidently come before him. Why? Because when we believe in him, when we choose to follow him, I don't know how it happens, but when we choose to begin to follow and when we're baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and he dwells in us. And literally, he is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. And did you see what it says there in, the, in that passage, that section in Ephesians 2? But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. God loves you and, and wants to fill you with his presence, his spirit. He wants you to live confidently knowing that he is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there in you. Now let's go on in Ephesians chapter two, because I think this is really interesting because it's, it's, it's really relevant to, to what we see going on today, uh, in the world around us. Verse 14. For he himself, you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the father by one spirit. Through Jesus. God made the way possible for both Jew and Gentile to be with God. His presence could now be in anyone and everyone, anywhere and everywhere. And do you, do you hear the correlation? What God did through Jesus was make the way possible for everybody to be on level footing. Jew, Gentile, didn't matter. All are sinners and fall short of the glory of God. All deserve death. But because of Jesus, we can now all be saved. Doesn't matter who we are. We are all, all worthy of his presence if we choose to follow and believe in Jesus. 
And I don't know if you noticed, but do you, do you hear the correlation between what this is saying in both the spiritual and the natural world, uh, especially right now when it comes to the racial things that we're going through? Jesus didn't come just to destroy the barrier between Jews and Gentiles. He came to destroy the dividing wall of hostility between us as human beings. If we're going to believe that God is Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. And, and if we're going to believe that we are now individual temples where the spirit now dwells, then wherever we are, he is. And all of us, any of us can be with him. And if his spirit is with us, his spirit sets us free from all the things that the world tells us we need to follow. I love 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If we believe He has filled us with His Spirit, then wherever we are, He is there. Whatever, in, whatever we're in the middle of, He is right in the middle of it with us. And listen, if we're going to speak into what's going on right now when it comes to racial reconciliation, then we need to believe that he is there with us because we are there. We just need to ask him to lead and guide us. I, I, I feel like we need to truly believe that he is Jehovah Shema, the Lord is is there. And if we believe that, then wherever we are, he is there. And he will lead us and he will guide us and he will help us know what to do and he will help us to know what is right. And I believe that he will help us to know when we looked last week at, at Micah chapter 6 verse 8, he will help us know what it means to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with him because that's what I think he requires. I believe it's what he requires of us right now. But we have to believe that he is literally Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there and he is in us. So wherever we are, he is there. What I want to do right now is I just want to, uh, I want to spend some time in communion. And what I want to do is I want to us to ask him to lead and guide us as we go out into the world. Because listen, it's not just the, the racial um, struggles that are going on right now. The things that, that have been going on, unfortunately, for a long time that we've not really spoken about and spoken against. It's not just that. There are people still living in fear from the pandemic. There are people struggling with, with uh, financial things and emotional things. And, and people are grieving because people have died. They're, they've lost businesses. They've lost relationships. There are people hurting. And we need to understand that while the Lord is everywhere, he wants to work in and through us because wherever we are, he is there because he dwells in us. And what I want to do is I just want to pray that he will lead us and guide us. And I want us to do it through communion. But this morning, what I want to do is we're, we're going to uh, share in a song together. And during this song, I want you to take communion. And as you do, as you take the, uh, the emblems that represent the body and blood of Christ, uh, uh, during the song, I'd like you to first thank God for the freedom that we have. We've been set free from sin. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so the Lord is there. He is within us and he sets us free. Ask him how he can begin to show you how you can live out that freedom, how you can begin to be who he wants you to be. But I don't want you to just pray for that. I want you to pray and ask God to help you remember that wherever you are, his presence is not just with you. He's in you. And ask him to begin to lead you and guide you wherever you are so you can be present with his presence and make a difference wherever you are. I want to pray for us. 
And then we're going to share in this song and then we'll come back and we'll wrap things up. But let's take communion during this song and let, let's let it literally be a ministry time. Let's pray. God, I just pray right now that you would help us to understand that because of Jesus, we can receive your spirit and we can believe that you literally are Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there because you are in us and help us to see God that wherever we are, you are there and help us to see how you want to lead us and guide us to do ministry and change our world. God, help us as we remember what you did for us through Jesus, through his body and his blood. God, thank you. We pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Let's sing together and take communion. I love you, Lord. Who oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing Of the goodness of God Good.
So to finish up this morning, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 2. At verse 19, it says this. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Because we have received his spirit and he is Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there in us. We are no longer distant. We are no longer uh, far away from him. We are no longer aliens and foreigners. But now we are citizens in God's kingdom. And we are members of his family, his household. And he is working in and through us to help us be who he desires for us to be. Verse 21. In him... The whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. I don't know if, if you really think about it, but because he dwells in us, we can now dwell in him. And it's more than just us being individual Christ followers. We are now collectively the church. He has brought us together, and, and according to this, he is building us into a dwelling, a place in which he lives by his spirit. So he lives in us. And just like in our individual lives, we need to be intentional about allowing him to continue to, to, continue to mold us and shape us into a group that truly believes that he is Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. Now, to help us do that, uh, we, we've done the last two encounters last Saturday night. And last night, we did those because we wanted to begin to come together and, and allow him to really begin to prepare us for what he wants us to do next. For how he wants to continue to build us and mold us and bring us together to, to be a church that is going to truly live knowing that he is not just with us, not just among us, but in us. Now, to help us do that, you, you may be, um, if you were here for the encounter, you, you saw the video, uh, you saw some of the things we prayed about, uh, maybe on social media, you've seen the video, you've seen some things mentioned. Um, starting next Sunday, June 21st, we're going to experience together Crave, the at-home edition. And what that's going to look like, what that means is beginning next week and, and for the next three consecutive Sundays after that. We're going to have groups meet in homes to watch the online gathering and then to give God time to bring us together, to mold us, to shape us, to challenge us so we can begin to really experience fellowship again. But it's going to be intentional fellowship. We want to watch the online gathering together, take communion together, pray for each other. And really, these four weeks, really use them to prepare us to be back together. Because listen, and I can't tell you how much, how much I desire this. I don't want us to come back together and just be together for the sake of being together because that's what we're supposed to do as the church. I believe, and I've believed this since we started this church. God uh, wants to do amazing things through us and he already has. But for us to see him do even more amazing things, extravagant work like we talked about last week. We've got to ask him and allow him to continue to build us into this dwelling where he is in us and working through us. So we're going to begin meeting June 21st. We're going to meet in homes and we're going to be really um, 
geographically based. So there's going to be groups in the Taze Valley area. There's going to be groups here in the Huntington area. There's going to be a group over in the Ohio area, Proctorville, Chesapeake. And we're going to have these groups meet so we can really begin to, uh, again, encourage, comfort, and urge each other to live a life worthy of God. These groups are going to help us crave for more of him. So we'll be a church where his presence is preparing us to do more than just gather, but to gather and scatter. To be a part of one of these groups, if you haven't already, you just need to go to regenerationwv.com slash crave. Regenerationwv.com slash crave. And you can find one of the groups that's going to meet in your area. And once you do that, leaders will be in touch with you. We'll be in touch with you. And we'll, um, uh, uh, we'll give you details, directions, all of that. And we just ask that you pray. We began last night praying for these groups. And we just ask that you begin to pray that God will prepare you to be a part of this group. There's going to be about 10 people or so in these groups. And we just want, and, and listen, I want to encourage everyone to be a part of this group because we're considering this, this is regeneration for the last four weeks. This is the natural progression towards us getting back together, not just because of the guidelines, because of the pandemic, but because this is what we believe God is going to use to help us grow deeper in our fellowship with each other and our fellowship with him because he is Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. So I want to encourage you right now, go sign up for one of the groups. If you've got questions, you can either text me or call me 304-314-2548. You can send me a message on uh, Facebook, on Instagram. You can send a message to me, to Mike, to Sonny, to Wendy, to Corey, Edison or Max, our elders. All of our leadership are going to be involved in some form or fashion. Thank you, Governor Justice. In some form or fashion uh, involved in these groups. And we are going to together crave for him. I want us to be everything he desires for us to be. You are going to be amazed by what he does. Be watching our social media for all of our online content for videos and in the classes and prayer times and all of those things that we do. And um, listen, we are one day closer to being together. We are one day closer to being who God wants us to be. We are one day closer to literally being with him forever in heaven. Let's help each other get there and let's not be afraid to be who he wants us to be. If nobody's told you today, God loves you more than you could ever know. And so do we. We'll see you soon.